Bell, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Remember the old days of the river boats, when they had a big paddle wheel on the stern to push them along over the shallow parts of the river? Some folks call them the good old days. But really, the rivers and shallow lakes haven't changed much since those good old days, and they're still shallow in many parts, and the shifting sand and mud bars still are a menace to navigation. So we've still got river boats in some parts of the country. Our story today concerns the small river boats that take tourists from Knotty Pine up to Mirror Lake and the King's Islands. Say, I hear the whistle of a riverboat right now. So we bring you the adventure of the Floating Death Trap. <laughs> Old Andy Coogan handles his boat like it was a canoe. Look at the way he's coming into the dock, Jim. Yeah, Stumpy, and if you ask me, someday he's going to take the dock along with him. Andy Coogan's too sure of himself. That old tub of his ain't up to the shenanigans he tries to pull. Hey, why don't you two rivermen bury the hatchet? Can decent, honest competitors get along with each other? Not the way he works it. I keep my boat in good shape, but I can't cut prices the way he does. Hey, you, Andy Coogan. Don't you think it could be more careful when you pull up to the dock? We all got to use it, you know. Keep your shirt on, Jim Gunderson. I ain't never damaged it yet. Ah, but it won't be long. <laughs> That's what the monkey said when he got his tail caught in the mowing machine. Yeah, funny. Now, what do you gripe about, Jim Gunderson? Seems to me you always got a chip on your shoulder. Well, if I have, you got a two before on yours. When are you going to stop cutting tourist fares on me? That's all in the game, Jim, my boy. If you can't take it, then you should quit the river boats and retire. Yeah? I'd like that. Maybe you'd like to sell your old tub to Andy Coogan, eh? Look who's <laughs> talking about a tub. Well, that scow of yours is a constant danger on the river. <laughs> I don't see how any tourist in his right mind would he even travel on it. Now, see here, you young whippersnappers. I ain't got time to spend here if you're going to keep scrapping and spitting at each other. I'll be seeing you some other time. Hey, wait a minute, you old grizzly bear. I'll go along with you and get my license renewed by your boss. So as I can run Jim Gunderson out of business this year. <laughs> That's what you think, you old river rat. You'll run your business into a sand barn behind dry before you know it. Then I'll buy that old garbage scow of yours and fix it up. Yeah, that'll be the day. When the moon turns to green cheese, you'll be able to buy Andy Coogan out. I'll be back as soon as I get this year's license and run you off the river. Bill, here's my check for $100 to pay for my license. You give me that piece of paper, I'll be on my way not bothering you anymore this year. Uh, Andy, this year it's going to be different. Uh, I can only renew your license if you fix up your boat. What did you say? It, am I hearing things? I don't think there's any trouble with your hearing, Andy. I said I can't renew your license to carry tourists until some of the hazards are removed on your boat. I'll give you a freight license, but not a passenger license. You won't give me a license to take folks up to Mirror Lake? Andy, Bill's told you. You can't have a license this year until you get your boat fixed. When I ask for your advice, then you can talk, Henry Scott. Oh. Now, Bill Jefferson, give me one good reason why you won't give me a license to carry passengers. Just one good reason. All right, Andy. I can give you one good reason. Your stacks need repair. And if that isn't enough... I can give you a dozen other reasons. All right, keep talking. I'm waiting to hear some more of your river wash. Andy, I'd remind you that our inspections aren't river wash. Now, here's the list of serious defects we found on your boat. Huh. 
Darren wheel needs stack sleep. Deck planks need wheelhouse. Boy, there can. Why, why, you're putting me out of business. You rejected my whole boat. I had to, Andy. Why, my boat's no worse than it was last year. I wasn't here last year to give out licenses. But this year, I'm responsible. And I say, on inspecting the boat, that the stacks are a fire hazard and the boiler is a threat to human life. I can't allow our tourists to ride on your boat. I don't even want you to carry freight because you're endangering your own life by riding on that craft. I'll take care of Andy Coogan. And I don't need your sympathy. Did you give license to Jim Gunderson? Yes, I did, if you want to know, Andy. He keeps his boat in good repair. And while it's none of my business, it's my opinion you'll never do the business he does unless you make your boat safer and more attractive. Price cutting will get you nowhere, Andy. So, you're taking sides with Jim Gunderson. I get the picture. You two are in cahoots. Trying to run me out of business. How much is he paying you for this, Bill Jefferson? Now listen here, Andy. I can understand you're being hot under the collar about this. But you make one crack that I'm using this job for personal profit, and you'll really be in trouble. And I know only one thing, Bill Jefferson. Things are getting pretty bad when the Rangers take sides to run an honest man out of business. Jim Gunderson, you think that you and the ranger can put me out of business, eh? What? I had nothing to do with it. Well, you don't know Andy Coogan when he fights tooth and nail for his rights. And I've been on this river 20 years. And I ain't leaving for no scheming rascals now, understand? Yeah. Tell him, Andy. Yeah. We're behind you. No ranger's gonna run you off the river. That's or right. Or Jim Gunderson either. Ah, why don't you junk that crate of yours, Andy, and buy a new stand? <laughs> hey, Jim, are you gonna let him call you a crook and get away with it? Crook? I dare you to call me a crook, Andy Cogan, and we'll see what happens. Yeah? And what'll you do about it, Jim Gunderson? I say you're a crook to your face, and you're in cahoots well, with the ranger. Hey, hey, here's another one. Yeah. Even sides, Jim. Let's take them on. Oh, we ain't got time. They're taking us on. Here they come. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's the engine ain't joking, boys. You better knock it off. What seemed to be trouble here? Why, you fight like wildcats. Maybe you know, Trim. Uh, yes, I know. Just a slight disagreement of opinion, that's all. Slight <laughs> disagreement? <laughs> I'd hate to see what you fellas would do if you had a big one. It'll be all right now. Dummy, I, I think we got the disagreement straight out now. What happened to Andy? He all wet. <laughs> you said it, Ranger. He's all wet in more ways than one. <laughs> Hush up, right. Hush up, you hear? You, Jim, believe me, I'm not through with you yet. Well, whenever you're ready for more, let us know, will you? You fellas better not start more fist fight. It's not good. Somebody may get hurt bad. Yep. Better behave yourselves, boys. We'll have to put you in cages like monkeys. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> So that's the story, Mr. Banker. You think that Bill Jefferson and Jim are scheming to put me out of business? No, I wouldn't go for that idea at all, Andy. Well, why not? The evidence points that way. Well, because I've known both men for years and had many business dealings with them personally and through the bank, they're as honest as a man could be. And I'd be careful about accusing people that way if I were you, Andy. You could be taken to court and sued. You could? 
Yep. Unless you're hankering for a lawsuit, you can't go around talking about folks that way. Well, maybe I have been wrong talking the way I did, but well, what am I going to do? Bill won't let me stay in business, and I won't be able to pay back the loan I have from your bank. Well, Randy, let me talk with Bill, will you? He's a good friend of mine, and perhaps I can change his mind. That is, providing one thing... What's that, Mr. Banker? Is your boat in pretty fair shape, or is it as bad as Bill says it is? Well, some of the things he says are true, but... Well, I don't think they're as bad as he says they are. The stacks leak a little, sure. But they're not a fire hazard. The boiler's been repaired a lot of times, but it's not going to blow up. I'm not crazy enough to make things dangerous for myself. Well... Let me talk to Bill and see what can be done. Bill, why are you so hard on Andy? Surely his boat couldn't have deteriorated this much from last year. Well, last year I wasn't responsible for boat inspection, Ed. But I understand that the license was given him on his promise that he'd have the boat repaired. The truth is, he spent only a nominal amount of money, and the repairs were only temporary. I see. He didn't tell me that, Bill. To me, it's a clear case of neglect and cheap maintenance to cut down costs. And, of course, sooner or later, that method is more expensive in the long run. The costs catch up with you. Yes, but, Bill, here's the problem... And he's got a loan with my bank. And how can he pay it off if you don't issue him a passenger license so he can make a living? Well, that's his business, of course. But one way would be to sell his boat for what it's worth. Sure, he could do that. But he wouldn't have any money to live on until he got started in another business or got a job for himself. Well, he wouldn't be the first one who had to do it, Ed. I'm sorry, but neither you nor anybody else and make me issue a permit for operating what I believe to be a death trap. I refuse to bear the responsibility for the lives of people who would be traveling on that boat. Surely you can understand my position in this, Ed? I don't think I can this time, Bill. I think you're too hard. If anything did happen, Andy would be held responsible, not you. I don't agree with you there, Ed. Well, if you won't help Andy, I will. Okay, Ed. That's your privilege. Personally, I'm more than willing to help him, if he'll only help himself. Mr. Mayor, I wish you would persuade Bill to be more lenient in Andy's case. After all, Andy's an old-timer around here, been a river man for 20 years... I think he deserves something better than being shut off like this. Well, I don't know, Ed. Of course, I'll be glad to talk with Bill. I kind of agree with you in a way. Still, it would be bad publicity for our town if there was a tragedy. Will you go with me this afternoon to talk with Bill? Yes, Ed, I will. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I'll need all the support I can get. Bill's a tough enough opponent for half a dozen like me. Bob, will you give me a hand with this problem? You know Bill pretty well, don't you? Well, sure, we all know Bill pretty well. I'll be glad to go with you this afternoon, Ned. You know, I I think maybe Bill's out of line on this. Thanks, Bob. The mayor will be there, too. Three o'clock this afternoon at Bill's office. Dad, you hold a lot of influence in the community... How about throwing in with us and try to influence Bill to change his mind? Well, uh, I don't know, son. We could sell Andy's boat to get back the money we lent him. Yes, but in that case, Andy wouldn't have anything to tide him over until he gets set up again. Well, uh, maybe you're right. Uh, I'll go along and uh, see what I can do. Come all the big wigs and naughty pine, Bill. Oh, uh, Mayor, 
president of bank. Come right in, men. Sit down. Thank you, Bill. Say, you fellas look like you buried your last friend. Why the long faces? Many a true word spoken in a jest, Stumpy. Here, Henry, uh, rassle some chairs, will you? Oh, uh, sure, Bill. Here. Uh, here's a chair for you, Mr. Mayor. A couple Thank of more here, Henry. Thanks. Well, gentlemen, what's the nature of your visit? It's been a long time since all the town's VIPs were together at Ranger headquarters. It's about your refusing to grant a license to Andy Coogan, Bill. As I said before, I think you're wrong. I think you're stretching some fine technical points. So... And Bill, um... go ahead, Dad. Uh, Bill, we've come along with my boy to find out just why you're being so harsh with old Andy Coogan. As far as I'm concerned, Bill, I'm sort of half and half on this problem. I wouldn't want a tragedy to occur and ruin the city's name for tourist trade. But I don't like to see Andy put out of business either if we can help it. I'd like to know if you would reconsider. Bob, uh, what do you have to say? Well, Bill, we're old friends, but well, this time I think you're wrong. To suddenly cut off a man's livelihood when he's been in business here and naughty pine for years is... Well, I, I think it's unnecessary. Gentlemen, I can appreciate and understand your concern for Andy Coogan. Far be it from me to cut off a man's business. But... Now I suppose you're going to be coldly analytical, Bill. Well, I guess I am, Ed. I think I ought to be, where human lives are in danger, don't you? Well, you should go slow anyway. Sure, I agree with that. Well, Bill wins a first round, Grey Wolf. Yeah, fight not over yet. Gentlemen, I'm not going to itemize the faults we found with Andy's stern wheeler. I think you're all familiar with them as it is. That's right, Bill. No sense going over that again. Mr. Mayor... Would you issue a safety sticker to a man whose car had faulty brakes? Well, no, I guess I wouldn't, Bill. And if you did issue the safety sticker for a faulty car, and the driver ran somebody down, who would be to blame? Well, why, the driver, of course. Only the driver? Well, in a measure, I would be responsible, too. Sure, since I issued the safety sticker in the first place. That's right. Score a win on round two for Bill. Uh, he may clean sweep for that one. Now, gentlemen, uh, by the mayor's own admission, he's answered your question. Suppose the stern wheeler caught fire from the leaky stacks, or the boiler exploded and lives were lost. Who would be responsible? Beside Andy, that is. I suppose you'd have to bear some of the responsibility for issuing the licenses. Uh, well, it seems to me to be right. Well, gentlemen, do we have an argument? Well, as I said before, I certainly wouldn't want to pressure you into taking that kind of responsibility. I don't know, Mayor. Seems to me that Bill could give Andy a time extension to make the repairs. Tourist trade won't be heavy for another month yet. I side with the Mayor. I don't see where there's any argument left. To make Bill do this is like pointing a loaded gun at him. You tell him, Big Ed. And there's no telling when that there loaded shooting iron's gonna let go and hit Bill right between the eyeballs. No, sir, if I were Bill, I wouldn't issue that there piece of paper either. I'm sorry. I don't agree with that at all, gentlemen. I think Andy should get a break, and I'm going to do all I can to see that he gets it. You can help Andy, Ed. Eh? How's that? You sound so sure of yourself, Bill. I am. Help Andy get his boat repaired. See that he does it. And I'll be glad to issue a license. But not before. Well, Bill, I've got good news for you. Oh, that's fine, Andy. What's the good news? I fixed up my stern wheeler the way you asked. Say, that is good news. I'm sure glad you came to see things the right way, Andy. Well, here's my check, Bill. If you make up the receipts and license, I'll be getting back to work. Sure, I'll be glad to do that, too, after I've inspected your boat. After you've inspected? You mean you don't take my word that the repairs are made? Well, that's not what I mean, Andy. If you say you made them, I believe you. What I want to verify is that they were made according to specifications. Oh, Specifications. Well, let's go down and see it. Okay, Andy. 
My car's outside. Hi, Bill. Oh, hello, Jim. Say, Bill, did Andy tell you he fixed up that old tub of his? It don't look any different to me. Let me be the judge of that, Jim. Come on, Bill. Jim Gunderson don't know what he's talking about. Is that so? Listen, you old skin flint. At least I got my boat running on the river. Say, why don't you two fellas bury the hatchet? Stop squabbling with each other. Genuine competitors can make business better, you know. You don't have to cut each other's throats to stay in business. Ah, uh, nobody can get along with that fellow. Me, I don't even try anymore. <laughs> Listen to the man chirp. Just like a magpie. Here. We'll start with the boiler first, Bill. Okay with me. Well, what do you say, Bill? Satisfied? Inspection okay? No, Andy, I'm sorry to say it isn't. What? Well, I fixed up everything the way you wanted it. What more do you want? One thing I don't want is camouflage. I just want honest repairs. It'll be good enough to stand up under wear and tear. For instance? Those pieces of tin you wrapped around the leaky stacks. They wouldn't last a week. What? Bill Jefferson, you get off of my boat, you hear? Get off. And I'll run without a license. Now get off. Sure, I'll get off, Andy. But you'd better not run without a license. Or I'll have to put you under arrest. My judgment is that to operate this floating death trap is a menace to everybody on or near it. And that's final. Ranger headquarters, Bill Jefferson speaking. Bill, Ed Banker. How ornery can you get? Huh? What do you mean, Ed? Why, Andy, you fixed up his boat just as you requested, and you turned down his license again. What's the matter with you, Bill? What do you expect of a man? Now, just a minute, Ed. Did you look at the repairs Andy made? What? Why, no. That's what I thought. Take a look. They're nothing but camouflage, Ed. Pure camouflage. The boat's still in dangerous condition. Bill Jefferson, of all the downright stubborn people, you are the worst. Ed, believe me, if I thought for one minute hey, that Bill, that... Oh, Bill, you gotta come. Annie Coogan's riverboat's on fire. What's that? Oh, hold on, Ed. I, I said Annie Coogan's riverboat's on fire. Uh, up in Mirror Lake. Henry, you get Stumpy and Grey Wolf. Yeah? Stand by in the car. Okay. Get the fellas to radio the fireboat. I'll call Tom in the fire tower and... Find out how badly Andy's boat is burning. Right away, Bill. Ed, did you hear that? I sure did. And I take back all I said. I'll hang up right now so he can swing into action. Fire Tower 3, Tom speaking. Tom, this is Bill. Can you see Andy Coogan's boat? I'll say I can. I was just about to call you. How badly is it burning, Tom? Well, it looks like the fire's coming from around the stacks. I can see it pretty well through my glasses. Good boy. Keep your radio open and your eye on the boat until we get there. I'm taking the fireboat. So long. Yes, sir. Henry, you'll have to jump onto the deck. Uh, boat move out fast. Hey, wait for me. Here I come. Wee! Uh, this boat must be getting smaller. I almost missed it. Let her rip, boys. We maybe have trouble with sandbars and river, Bill. Yeah, this isn't a stern wheeler. I know, pal. You fellas each man a main nozzle and turn them aft. I'll start the pumps. There's only one sandbar that will stop us. Turn the nozzles down toward the water and lock them in place. What you plan to do, Bill? Lift stern of fireboat over sandbar with stream from high-pressure nozzles? That's the general idea. Man your stations, fellas. 
Bill, there's Andy's boat ahead on Mirror Lake. It burned bad. Give it all you got, Matt. Full speed ahead. Full speed ahead. Matt, keep it full speed ahead. Great Wolf, make sure those nozzles are locked. Pumps are turned on. When they give the word, open the valves. How close are we to the sandbar, Henry? Pretty close, Bill. A yell when the bow passes over the bar. No, Bill, no. Turn them on, fellas. Turn them off. Turn the nozzles around, fellas. We'll approach the boat from the starboard. Give it all you got, Matt. Cut the water. Cut the water. Fire's under control. Fire's under control. Ray, Nick, take a hose line, go aboard, and soak down the upholstery and walls in the cabin. Right, Bill. Fellas, drain the water out of the high-pressure gear. Okay. Okay, we're up. Hey, hey, there's Andy and some other fellow, other men up in the bow. Thank the Lord they're all right. Here come motorboat, Bill. It's got Ed Banker and Jim Gunnison and other men on it. Henry, you entertain the distinguished guests. Stumpy, Ray Wolf, let's go aboard Andy's boat and take a look. I want to be sure the fire's out. Bill, I want to apologize for the way I acted. You were dead right about Andy's boat. It was in bad condition. Well, that's all I'm right. I'm sorry, but... too, Bill. And personally, you did a fine job of saving the boat from total destruction. Well, he sure did. The other ranger's with him. Bill, will you accept an apology? If I'd have listened to you, this wouldn't have happened. Thanks for saving my boat from being burned to a crisp. Maybe saving my life in the bargain. Well, fellas, you don't have to apologize. Let's forget it. We all have our differences of opinion, and that's our privilege. Well, maybe so. Now I'm really going to have my boat fixed up in tip-top shape. And then I'll be after you for a license. <laughs> and I'll be glad to give it to you, Andy. So you can run the river with Jim Gunderson. <laughs> yes, if he can catch me. Uh, what do you say we bury the hatchet, Andy, and be good friends, huh? <laughs> well, that suits me fine. Here's my five. And here's mine. <laughs> Say, all's well that ends well, is the old saying. Mill proved that you have to stick by your guns when you know you're right, even against all your friends sometimes. Well, see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill! Boys and girls, this is Ranger Bill back again for just a third of a minute with an extra word of thanks to you for joining us today. Hope you'll team up with the Rangers every week at this time when your local station gives us this chance to get together. See you then. <laughs>